There's an episode of Tales from the Crypt where this guy is dead, but still conscious on the autopsy table, and he watches them start to take out his brain POV. That's what it's like when I can't sleep. Insomnia is also like trying to dive underwater with pool noodles taped <laughs> to your limbs. Like the waking autopsy nightmare. Is that where people think I'm trying to do to them in the writing lab? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> ugh. Is anyone paying attention? The pe people are still terrified of a girl boss, right? Boss is not a gendered word. You can be a boss without stating the fact that you're a girl. By the way, most self-identified girl bosses are indeed grown women. And that qualifier implies, aren't you impressed? A girl is a boss. Everyone should kind of be the boss of their own lives. This is America. People kind of hate the word boss unless they're the one using it. I throw the word boss like a fucking brick through the candy glass window of arrogance that blinds the insecure to my personal sovereignty. I don't intend to boss people around or make them do anything they didn't agree to in the first place. You decide your own level of involvement. Except they wouldn't ja let Jack look at the file, so... No, that wasn't right. <laughs> in Full Metal Jacket, R. Lee Emery, may he rest in peace, was a poet of a drill sergeant and effectively brought militaristic perfection to every unfortunate soldier under his command. So much that Stanley Kubrick was impressed, and he's never impressed. Kind of a Jack Nicholson fanboy, though. Taking away their names, leveling their egos, breaking their spirits, shaming their weaknesses, enforcing rules in creative and ironic manners, and never once losing enthusiasm, Arlie Emery basically played the same character over and over for the rest of his career. Gladly. Now what have I learned? That teaching means bringing the best out of someone especially when they don't see it or they're not confident enough to try. Teamed up Joker and Pyle, building up, their, building up both their strengths. He was impressed when Pyle actually passed basic training. Kind of seemed proud of him. I like to save my loudest voice for singing, and I kind of hate being mean to people. I'm not a drill sergeant. More like a personal trainer for your inner writer. We are co-learners, y'all. Who's the boss around here? Me, you, and the universe. Britney Spears tricked me into writing about her for free again. Girl, get to work on that $15 million book, please. Some of us are still trying to get paid. The writers are on strike, and you're not one of us yet. Technically, I'm not on strike, but I am doing the same things, holding out for what I'm worth. Is my story worth $15 million? Hmm. No, no one's story is worth that much, especially if you've already put it all online, except for the head shaving. I need to know that story, and if the entire book is an account of that one night, night I will stand in line for a copy like I did for the seventh Harry Potter book while wearing a plaid skirt. <laughs> I think my new desktop picture, a faded black and white Britney shaving her head while smiling, could be an album cover. Her pinky is out like she's drinking tea. There are a fuck ton of pictures of me I don't ever want to see again. But if someone was like, what's going on here? I'm genuinely interested, I would go there. And I'll either be honest or tell you to fuck off. Brittany is ashamed of that meltdown because we fucking shamed the hell out of her to that for having a custody battle that drove her to that point. My mom sympathized with her because my dad wouldn't let us see her when she was on drugs. 
Mom didn't shave her head, but she immediately understood the feeling. We all blame Brittany for basically committing self-harm, then put her on, her on stage like a week later, when she was still on drugs. South Park kind of got it right that time, like she had blown off the top of her head. We should be ashamed of ourselves. There I go again, writing for Brittany for free. Does this help? Yes. Celebrities exist because we identify with them. I think Brittany is desperate for genuine sympathy. This sounds really mean, but I'm not a fan of her music. It's just not my thing. Sure, she's a talented dancer and a fair singer, created some 90s pop standards, and every time she gets all maudlin on social media, I'm not a girl yet not a woman starts playing in my head. <laughs> Still, I don't casually listen to Baby one more time. Kinda codependent lyrics. I'd fucking love a Britney Spears cover of Shit List by L7, though. Where's your edge, Britney? Where's that punk rocker who would rather be bald than not see her children? That was kinda badass if you really think about it. Don't do it again. Write about it instead. Could be way worse. Britney could have done something like when Brad Pitt made Inglorious Bastards with Harvey Weinstein after Angelina told him Weinstein assaulted her. Brad does not want to talk about that. I understand. It was a horrific mistake. You know why? I fucking love that movie. It's so well made, like a fucking illuminated manuscript from the Middle Ages, crafted to near perfection, every frame tainted by the abuser who paid for it. I almost blame Quentin Tarantino less than Brad. Quentin was reality blind to Weinstein's behavior. He made so many movies with that guy, he had to have been. Now we can't have a Kill Bill 3 either, or Gangs of San Francisco. Brad could have ended Weinstein before making that movie, if he had believed Angelina. Ended him, like with a baseball bat. Don't do that. I guess that's what's so disappointing about Brad's reluctance to deal with these facts. He had the power to stand up to this bully, and he didn't use it. Like the Nazis, was he following orders? <laughs> Choke on that irony, hard. Not only did Angelina suffer through the entire process pretending like it didn't happen, but now all that work has gone to waste. I didn't waste the writing I made for Seth MacFarlane. He didn't pay me for it. He didn't have a contract. I still own every word. The thing is, he could have, if he had talked to me on that sidewalk before I went to jail. I would have been reality blind forever. Took me this long to take off those sunglasses. I don't want to fight about it anymore. Am I overreacting to Brad missing Zahara's first day at Spelman College? Maybe a little. That's projection from my own childhood trauma, obviously. It's also how I honestly felt in the moment. I hate that feeling when something makes you happy, then a realization shatters it to pieces. I gave out way too much, I give out way too much parenting advice for someone who can't keep a houseplant alive. I just identified with that kid so much, I wish her dad had been there too. My first day of college was kind of scary. I flew across the country by myself at 18. My dad was in depression mode and my mom couldn't afford to go with me. My favorite picture of my stepdad and my stepbrother is the one on, framed on top of the TV. Michael's first day at American University. Dip, Jim uh, didn't get to see Michael grow up because he was drunk until 95 and then his ex wouldn't share custody. Michael teaches kids with autism now. 
I'm sure Brad will be there for Zahara's graduation. It fucking better be. <laughs> I hope she understands I'm proud of her too. All that privilege and she still wants to learn. That's admirable. Domestic violence is no joke. There's a dent in my perception of Brad Pitt that doesn't seem to have taken in others. No one wants to talk about losing control and hurting someone you love. It's also not our jobs to resolve these problems for them. I couldn't bring myself to read the extremely detailed FBI report Angelina had to make because the fact that she had to was enough information. If there's a dent in my perception, there's a fucking crater in his children's. If he doesn't like talking about it, that means they don't or feel like they can't. Why? Because everyone has their own fucking opinion. Like they're not allowed to think for themselves. Brad doesn't need to make an amends to me. He owes Angelina and their children. I can't overlook these facts. I wouldn't be doing my job. My job is to get to the root of what's holding you back. Brad's ego makes him stupid. I relate. What can I do about this? This. Right. I can't force Brad to deal, but I'm not contractually obligated to shut up about it. I want to facilitate healing. Brad doesn't seem to realize that making amends is a relief. I can't untie that noose for him, and I'm not a therapist, but I will accept a willingness to reconcile. That's real bravery. Bearing your weakness because you're strong enough to face yourself. Challenge. Brad seemed to think that I was going to be the Liz Lemon to his Jack Donaghy, but they put Jack in the writer's room for one episode and it was a disaster because his ego put him there. You can leave your ego by my doorstep. Liz Lemon was all baby crazy and actually tried with romantic relationships. She had a team though. Tina Fey had streaming services cut the episode where Jenna was in blackface, which is commendable. Cutting the episode, not the blackface. <laughs> Some of our creations hurt more than help in retrospect, and it's best not to promote them anymore. But she didn't just ignore it. They made an effort to make it right. You can't unshoot the episode or rewrite it now. You can look back and say, Yikes, that was bad, sorry. And not do it again. She also took the Chris Brown humming out of another episode. Rihanna's career was tainted when he beat the shit out of her and fuck that guy too. Doesn't make weird it doesn't make what Weird Al did to Coolio even remotely better. Psychological trauma versus physical trauma. Which is worth worse. Both of them. Rihanna is still around, though. There are times in my life where I hate to admit I'd rather have been hit in the face than inflicted by mean jokes. You can sue for being physically attacked. Freedom of, of speech does not mean freedom from consequences. It just means the government can't tell you to shut up. Everyone else tells you to shut up and take a joke. I've told jokes I wish I could take back. Hurt people with my words. Ugh, the lullaby list, for fuck's sake. When I was a child, I lashed out in violence a lot. My older sister was an abusive bully to me, so I learned it from her, not my parents. I, on I only started to unlearn that behavior when I was an adult. I threw a glass candle holder at my dad's picture frame, one of those old-time photo shoots where he was cosplaying a gangster from the 30s. He was trying to argue that climate change doesn't exist, <laughs> and God damn it, Fox News, that man was a genius. How dare you? I'm glad nobody got hurt, but that was the thing that set Leo on his environmental PR crusade, so I don't regret it. 
I regret ever hitting anyone. Naming every instance would be traumatic, not only for me, but it could be for anyone I hurt. Maybe they don't want to think about it. If they brought it up to me, I would attempt to make amends. Even though I was a child, these events haunt me. I want to be forgiven. Gangs of New York was not anti-violence. I don't know what Martin Scorsese was trying to teach me there, but it eventually had the opposite effect. I've never broken a glass over someone's head over cranberry juice in a lazy period joke. What do I want? I want to do the writing lab. I want to see my name on a big screen underwritten by. I want to see these A-list actors step up and take control of the narrative. I want to create writing teams who build up each other. I want to be supportive as a co-learner and accept as much education as I give. I want to forgive. I want to be forgiven. I want the stalkers to realize I have no forgiveness for them, especially when they're, they're making the resentments worse by leaning in. If I tell you to go away, maybe one day we can reconcile. Until then, go away. I want to utilize my theater skills again, create a rock opera that moves people the way Jesus Christ Superstar moved me. I want to create films that make people laugh and cry, and also want to put their names under written by, also written by. <laughs> I want to feel like I'm living up to my purpose. I want to crush my own ego while helping others give birth to their true selves. Co-learners were the students and teachers at Evergreen. We were equals, as any good teacher will learn as much from every student as they teach. We are guides in each other's education and evolution. We peeled the words off of pages, processed them through the brain machine, and let out that hungry ghost feeling trying to understand. Ourselves, each other, and the inherent chaos of our lives. Finding order and meaning in everything. What do I not want? I don't want to be alone anymore. I spend most of my time alone. I even miss Leo's antagonistic insecure messages. I think he's convinced I'll eventually like Camilla and let her stay next door for him where he pays for her cocaine and her lifestyle, her credit cards, and the emotional manipulation she inflicts on him. She's following me around like I've got any intention of accepting her in my life. Like she's got money to offer? <laughs> I'd rather take Elon Musk's money, seriously. Seriously, Elon, email me. <laughs> Give me money. I'll put you in a writing lab. I'm sick of the Truman Show out there. It makes me not want to leave the apartment sometimes. It's such a fucking hassle. Even when I'm walking around with my ukulele for laundry quarters and weed money, and someone is right up the block on sunset basically waiting for, for me with a $20 bill. That happened the last two times. I'm grateful, yet I'd rather have a billion dollars. All at once. 1 44th of what you paid for Twitter. I don't want to work for you, Elon. I will work with you, though. If you're willing to be an equal co-learner. You're not retarded. <laughs> you're too rich and autistic to see that your social group is manipulating you. I'm too confrontational to be manipulative or manipulated anymore. <laughs> Let's see if Leo starts talking to me again. That stupid, beautiful face. Ugh. Even I can be shallow, but I'm also being slowly poisoned by loneliness. Elon can keep competing with Zuckerberg if that's what he wants, pay me an intimidating amount of money, and I'll get the writing lab up and running. Turn me into an oligarch, and I'll change the game. Maybe Leo is waiting for some kind of confrontation between Camilla and me in public, waiting for her to realize I'm not interested in her at all. 
waiting for her to, to decide to move out, or maybe he doesn't want her to move on to someone else. Possibly someone even more manipulative than he can be. Leo doesn't realize the abuse he's suffering. Or maybe he does and doesn't see a way out. I told Leo to come here for the writing lab. And that offer is still on the table for now. He has to sign a contract that says he will follow the rules as I intend to. Some sobriety and cathartic journaling may help him take control of his life for the first time. I'm not offering that to Camilla, so she will keep showing up like I'm going to. I'm just going to ignore her. Same with all the stalkers. Leo is afraid he can't. I understand that feeling, Doc. I wrote that line in the margins of my paperback copy of The Shining last summer. When Danny thinks about how he's watching over his parents as they sleep. Having that kind of power makes you feel responsible, even for the people who are supposed to be responsible, too. Even worse, Danny thinks when Daddy punished me for messing up his papers. No one told him that broken arm wasn't his fault. Now I want to print out the script for Taxi Driver, spread the pages all over the floor, and then pour beer all over them. What kind of beer? Bud Light. Conservatives won't know what to feel. <laughs> it seems like Brad and Leo are both upset that I'm not ready and raring to go marry either one of them. I'm not considering the prospect of marriage and children with anyone until I see my name on that big screen underwritten by. I won't start a life with someone who doesn't make that a priority, or give an unfulfilled parent to any child. Leo and Brad are both unfulfilled. Leo thought an Oscar would fix him. Brad thought Angelina and their children would make him feel whole. Neither of these things are going to happen until I see my name on a big screen underwritten by. I can't build them up with false hope because I don't know how any of us are going to feel at the end of our writing lab. I could see a future with either of them. Leo has kind of been holding out for me this entire time. I kind of fucked up his sexuality for a while, though, but he seemed very interested in working through that with me. <laughs> He's afraid of the shame. He's afraid I'll fall out of love with him like I did with Seth MacFarlane. Seth never started talking to me. MacFarlane. Seth Green signed the Carrie Fisher petition, but not the Occupy Family Guy petition. He stood up to his boss and to me. Kind of punk rock. Even though he was wrong on the latter. I'd love to write Idle Hands too, as Devin Sawa was kind of begging me to. I don't have any resentments against Seth Green just because he works with someone I abhor. I also would write an episode of Robot Chicken. Would I marry Brad Pitt if Leo never starts talking to me again? Would you? <laughs> yes. Any gender, any sexuality, if Brad Pitt was in love with you, you'd be impressed with yourself. <laughs> Brad doesn't want to be submissive to me, and I don't want that either. I'm not a dom, I'm a switch. <laughs> a co-learner. I want to be best friends with Angelina, and call her out on her bullshit too. And give her opportunities to write and direct in the writing lab. If any ex-wife is going to get along with me, she's Angelina Jolie. <laughs> she's not alone like I am, though. They've both got resentments to work through or put aside for the sake of their children. My dad didn't apologize to my mom before he died. That's a wasted opportunity. I would be a better step-parent than parent, honestly. I adore and sympathize with their children. I want to help them find peace. Beyond these issues, Brad and I will get along. We're kind of the same person. <laughs> 
Southern when it sells, we love the same music, don't take ourselves too seriously, intellectually curious, understand when we fucked up, maybe he does, and tend to blame others before we deal with it, or artistically ambitious, vaguely gothic aesthetic, have sexual chemistry, a dark and witty hilariousness, enthusiastic about periods, and people tend to underestimate us. The difference is no one really holds him accountable. Johnny, De Johnny Depp's ex-wife made a vague reference to him in an article about domestic violence, and he got kicked off the Fantastic Beasts franchise. That was like millions and millions of dollars. That horrific trial had the opposite effect of his intention, though. I am so not willing to go back to court by choice. Angelina filed an FBI report, and no one called Brad an abuser. No one was ever on Team Brad because he started a new relationship while still married, and everyone blamed the women. People don't really hold Angelina accountable either because she does the same Carnegie Rockefeller bullshit as Leo and Scorsese, promoting charitable causes so people will criticize her wealth less. She's also got mental health issues that I think she's medicating with alcohol, which is a recipe for depression and possible suicidal ideations. I tend to sympathize with her more than Britney because I like her movies. Shallow. I'm just as fucking shallow as the rest of you. No one labeled Ozzy Osbourne an abuser when he strangled Sharon. Because it's not our job to forgive him for her. And he's the Prince of Darkness. It's like part of his thing? No. Just because you're goth doesn't mean you can hurt people. I'm pretty sure they're still married, though. I was on Mushrooms when I sent Leo that NIB video on his birthday when I was singing, and it felt so fucking good. The high is still with me. Their love is real. I can feel it. I think Brad and Angelina still have love for each other. Even after two more weddings, after dad tortured her decades later, my mom still grieved when my dad died. It took a few months, but she told me she broke down crying because the father of her children died. She remembered the night that she got into nursing school, and he played Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton and danced with her in the kitchen. She said, she was, she said he was the happiest on the three days me and my sisters were born. She was the only woman he ever loved. Mom loves my stepdad because he saved our family when my dad gave up. Still made friends with my dad because they both love the Beatles and us. My family will be healing until the day we die. Same as everyone. We've found our own levels of peace and harmony amidst the unresolvable past. My dad is dead. There's no reconciliation to be had there. A pain I have to live with forever. If I project these feelings onto anyone else, it's because I want to save them from the same fate. My dad wrote an extremely intellectual novel about a detective searching for the proof of God. And that was also the title. I edited the first draft for him with a red pen on the printed page. Google Docs are easier, but that was very cathartic. I got an editing credit, he accomplished a life goal, and got to work with his kid. That was a healing experience. I just wish he hadn't been in handcuffs the last time I spoke to him. Too late now. Brad and Leo still have a chance to get better. I'm writing all these letters and journals because I'm attempting to convince them, and everyone, that I have the skills and the willingness to facilitate mental wellness through writing and cognitive behavioral therapy, under clinical supervision, obviously. Alcoholics Anonymous is based around the stoic philosophy that provided the basis for Freud's talk therapy method. Leave your judgments on the doorstep. Everyone fucks up. Freud was a cocaine addict in the age where no one saw a problem with that. Thought it was a miracle drug. 
probably died thinking that too. Just because sm someone is smart and famous doesn't mean they're not fucked up. I willingly acknowledge my fuck ups and try not to judge others for theirs. I still fuck up and judge people a lot. Could I forgive Leo for every bad thing he's done for me? Maybe. If he acknowledges them and makes amends. The last time we communicated, I asked Leo if he loves me and wants to marry me because he had already asked me to marry him back in January in a text in all caps, and said he was officially asking. Sure. <laughs> Leo said, after all I've said, yes. So I told him, for that to happen, no guns, no drugs, no ex-girlfriend living next door, no alcohol, and he needs to get mental health care. Leo blew up like that was completely unreasonable. Like, everyone else, please go through that list and tell me if I'm out of line. Two weeks before that, Leo lost a job and said I should not be around guns right now, implying he could hurt someone. I was paralyzed. The cops don't believe me. I can't save him from this side of a screen, and he knows that. He thinks he's not good enough, like he doesn't have the ability to make some healthy changes in his life, or he doesn't deserve them. About a week after that, Leo almost started talking to me. I saw that Leo was typing message. He was talking to me when Kurt Cobain was sitting on my couch, nervously smoking a ghost cigarette, and that shotgun-scented guilt was permeating his spirit. The submarine had just gone missing. Leo hasn't read any of my messages since. I keep dreaming that I hear the notification sound and it's almost a relief. A letdown when I realize it's a hallucination. I'll never stop trying to talk to him again. Does that mean we'll end up together? No. Tomorrow is promised to no one. I can't predict the future, but I can hope for a better one. Whether that means we're right for each other or not. I still want us both to be fulfilled. At 2 a.m. and started writing this. My sleep cycle is so fucked up because I keep running out of weed. Everyone seems to think they're a doctor and can tell me I don't need it. I need weed like I need the rest of my psych meds, but the stigma makes it so I can't get insurance to pay for it. One of the most effective medicines, weed has saved me from suicidal thoughts countless times. I don't get suicidal when I have weed, therefore it is a necessary, life-saving medicine. I hate being addicted to anything. I need more therapy, more money, more life satisfaction in general before I can get a handle on it. The writing lab will help with all of that. I'm going to keep sending out these videos until someone gets me through to anyone who can help. Or maybe I'll just send an email to Elon and tell him to give me the money. Yeah, that too. I could buy a weed farm and never run out again. Rehab some addicts with paid farm work and natural medicine. Patent the writing lab. Hire doctors and therapists to develop the psychological process. Get my name on that big screen under written by. I'm trying to be careful about who I ask for money. That takes courage and integrity. I'll be fucking unbreakable until the day I die. I learned it from Rachel Corey. I'm not standing in front of a bulldozer though. Kind of am one. I'm not gonna run over anyone. I will bulldoze my way into this club where they won't open the door. Don't be like me. Follow me. Also, please contribute on Venmo, PayPal, or Cash App. My tag is Imagination for Sale, all one word, on all of them. I could really use $20 for weed. Fuel the fire, you won't get burned. I promise.